What's up? We're back. I hope you're having a great day. If you're hearing this, you have ran the marathon. And you've coming out, you came out the other end. However, a better person. You know, because I'm not going to, some some of y'all might be listening to this feeling salty because you didn't actually cross the finish line because something unforeseeable happened. Yeah, that's salty. You know what I mean? So I don't want to <clears throat> make you feel more salty. I just want to celebrate the fact that you showed up. The you fact tried. That you using the word salty? Stop <laughs> making it more salty. You said salty first. <laughs> just, yeah. Anyway, this is, this is the Runners Club podcast and we're here to support you. We love you. You know, we appreciate your efforts. I'm your co-host, Courtney Phillips. It was good seeing Gonzalez in here making breakfast right now. Yeah, he's over here with this big ass knife in my face, eating, uh, cutting up a avocado so for his egg. We, we, I'm about to break the fourth wall, but only man, Courtney, we haven't actually experienced Marathon Weekend yet. Nope. But we are here. The fourth I'm wall? This, this is, this is supposed to be a meeting that we turned into an episode. You just said and now we're it. here. Mm-hmm. Your boy is because my face is still swollen. I got my wisdom teeth pulled out. The wire. We about to get chunky in the day through the wire. That's exactly how I felt earlier this week. Oh my god! You oh my god. literally decided to get your wisdom teeth pulled the week before marathon. Man, I got stressed out because I caught an infection like a couple weeks ago, and so I was just like, "Nah, I can't wait. This shit gotta go." You know what okay. I'm saying? Like. And I should have waited. I should have just <laughs> taken my antibiotics and I should have waited because one, that was the most traumatic experience I've ever felt. And I was awake for the entire time. Yeah, that's wild. And they really and, are like taking entire. It's like, it's not just the tooth, it's the root. It's everything. There's a whole... was in there like doing this. Like, 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 like he was just trying to like, like, like to calm like, down pop it out and shit. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, especially on this side, I'm like, yo, it's like, it's a joint there. Like, it's connected. Like, it's it's holding on right there. He just, he just going there. He just like, mm, just like flicking and pulling. I'm throwing avocado all on my face. But he's just like going in, bah, bah, bah. And then like, he'll, 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 he'll pull away for a minute and he'll grab the drill and he just going in there. And then my nigga pulled out some pliers from somewhere. But you know what really got me, right? He spent Facts like Facts of my mouth are hurting right now. I just didn't need to tell you. Gee, he spent 50 minutes. So this is why my left side is still swollen. My right side is, is pretty much going down. He spent like 45, 50 minutes, you know, drilling in, sawing this side, you know, shaving some of the bone down, you know, pulling out the tooth little by little and stuff like that. And then he, he was like, he was like, hey, listen. I think you should wait and come back for the other side. You know, that one was a little bit worse. It just took us 45 minutes, 50 minutes to get this other side out. Mind you, my podcast only been playing for 30 minutes, so I don't know how his math was adding up. But I'm like, okay, I ain't going to argue with you, sir. I'm the one strapped down. You're the one with the sharp objects. It's been 50 <laughs> minutes, you know. But he obviously don't want to go to the other side. But I'm, he like, hey, listen. It's to your discretion. You want to do it, we can do it. I was like, nigga, let's fucking go because I'm not coming back and being in this position ever again in my life. <sighs> so I guess he decided, well, oh, you going to make me do this again? He got the left tooth out in like 20 minutes. But mind you, my man was going ham. He took that shit out in like three big pieces. Dang. Three big pieces. Yeah, I was like, my oh, okay, my boy. Hurts. Okay, my boy. My I boy, see. my boy. You could have just said you ain't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just said that. You know you what I'm saying? Just what you need. <laughs> spoke your piece. Yeah. Right. Uh, so. That's crazy. Glad that I was put under because I just, I just remember the doctor literally like grabbing my hand and being like, oh, look at that. Look at that on your hand. And then I was asleep. No, nah, you And know then what? I woke up and I was like, the fuck? I was in a different room on a different bed. And the nurse came in and she's like, oh, you're up already? Like, that's crazy. Like, you woke yourself up? I'm like, yeah, what? Well, like, all right, give me the fuck and out And I'm here. supposed to be able to? <laughs> she thought I was going to be still asleep. So, um, yeah, I definitely woke myself up. Um, yeah, I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad that you feel a little bit better. I'm glad that you're able to speak. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. It's been awesome. I, I didn't want to go under, though. 
because like I don't want I don't want Karen to record me saying wild shit. I ain't want to say no wild shit that I was on regret either. So you know how you be seeing the people on on the joint on 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 Instagram after they get some teeth work, and they be like, "Oh, I was birthed by butterflies." I don't know. They be saying wild shit. I feel like it's because the people know. around them are instigating. It's like when I had my shit taken out. Yeah, I was saying some. I was like, "It's like don't speak to me." Okay. Yeah. I'd be fucking with Karen too much. That would have been opportune time for her, for her to, to fuck back. with you. Yeah. And it would have been everywhere. And I don't want no smoke. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I didn't want no, I didn't want karma to visit me in that way. Not at all. But we back. I'm talking regular. I'm I'm not taking my pain pills as much anymore because I'm not in that much pain. Okay. I might just be chunky, chunky in for the week. That's all. Okay. All right. You know, um, soft foods. Right. Yeah. I see you got your eggs and your avocado. Jeez. Still with I'm that so big happy. knife in your hand. I'm so happy not to be eating goat milk yogurt and jam and applesauce oh. and bananas. Nope. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. You have no idea. Yeah, applesauce and bananas. I was sitting here smashing noodles up against the roof of my mouth the other night so I can have like real food. Yeah. Well, um, I see you have that bandit uh, sweatshirt on. <laughs> I need to know more because uh, shout out to Tim Rossi for, first of all, go. making his moves, doing what he needs to do, but then starting a whole fitness brand called Bandit. Bandit. Well, and they can't start it. He employed what? by it. Oh, okay. So he's employed yeah. by it. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. He ain't started. It was, uh, I forget the name. I think actually one of the names of the guys who did start it is Tim. I don't oh. know. But. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty he ain't cool. Started, but it's, I feel like it got a lot of, it got a lot of essence of him. Like. For sure. If, if he wasn't involved in like from the ground floor, like, it, I feel like it was like the perfect fit. Yeah. Um, and you know, so what did you get? What's the vibe? What's the feeling of the of of the brand? I'm I'm curious. So bandit will be available at the last out corner store. The only really? Spot in Chicago where you can get it. Congrats. It's available right now. I mean, if you listen to this after the marathon, it's been available on dot com since I mean uh last out corner store dot co since last Monday. But you know. We got we got the t-shirt, we got the hoodie right here, which honestly is my favorite hoodie right now. Like the the cut and the fit on it, because you know, mm-hmm. my stomach been going now. The benefit of having my wisdom seeds taken out and eating soft food only is that my stomach been getting flatter. Oh I've been yeah, no pounds because I've been eating highly fat food, but like this shit's going down. <laughs> I, I understand why niggas be like not eating meat, but I love the I love the cut. Because it don't accentuate my belly. You know how like hoodies be like, like they they want to come in at the bottom and like tuck up and stuff, and they just sit on you weird. Yeah. Like I like this because it just it's it boxy. Lays. It got this big ass kangaroo pouch right here. Got a little right cut here. on the side, slits on the you know side. What I'm okay, what does it say so, on the back? Bandit running, but the running the ing is spread out. Like it's giving uh, design. It's giving thoughtfulness. Uh, it's giving uh, streetwear. Yeah, What's that patch on the on the arm? Uh, uh, basically the same thing. Uh-huh. What does that say? Wait, let me do the, let me oh, do the TikTok. Ooh, right? yeah, we got it. Okay, the stitching, the stitching. Okay, detail. I love that. So, so at the store, we got the women's uh, uh, two piece. We got the crop top with the matching shorts, black and toupee or tapois or brown. My nigga, like <laughs> and toe. <laughs> yeah, toe. Is that what it's called? <laughs> I think it said toupee, topa. <laughs> I don't know. Fancy words, man. So, so uh, they got the men's compression shorts, which are, are, are really dope. Um, uh, they got thick thighs. So I don't know if they was like really, you know, put together for thighs. Mm. But they, they don't they have thick nice thighs. Me, it's, yeah. it's, it's if for you the got a, if you got like a runners. traditional runner's body. If you a little thin, you know what yeah. I'm saying. You cutting the, you slicing the air. 
perfect for you. But, you know, for us, for us with those, with the trunks, you know, with the thighs, you know, you might want to size up. You might want to see how that feels. I ain't I doing just, no squats in them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. Cause I, I you know, it like I, I have a reason, I have more appreciation for my, my trunks, you know, cause I don't have, I don't have the traditional, you know, thin runner's legs either, but I, you know, lately I just be like, you know what? It's, it's cute. It's cute. It's a little thick. It's a little thick. It's something to grab onto. It's, it's like, <laughs> it's there for a reason, okay. you know? <laughs> Uh, so shout out, shout out to all the all the thick legged runners out there. Yeah, hey, you know, you know, she'll come to a place for my girl to sit on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know, it ain't always built for <laughs> built for running running apparel. You know? Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of the high waisted joints that you know mm. it makes you, it elongates the leg a little bit. I feel like the Nike one. Biker shorts are perfect for black women. Well, honestly, I've been into the yoga, the yoga spandex, the yoga biker short. Because the biker oh, shorts word. in the running division, to me, it's like they still cut on the hip, and that is not a That's cute look. The, the one joints are not running. You know, mm-hmm. they still have all the moist wicker and all of that. But the one biker short, that's what it's called, the Nike one. Yeah. It got a, it got some high rise to it. It got more give in the leg area and stuff like that. It got a pocket on that side and stuff like that. Like, like they they like this is Karen got some thighs. Okay, Karen got sneaky ass thighs. Her thighs shite fucking crazy. But like out of all of her spandex shorts, those they don't be riding. They don't be doing like weird shit and stuff like that. You know, like mm-hmm. they they sit on her perfectly. Yeah, so that's good to know because um yeah, I can't do I can't do the like I love Nike Pro, but the way they I could I would never wear a Nike Pro bottom with a with a sports bra or like a crop. Oh, that top sounds right. Because <laughs> <laughs> because it just sits so low. I'm like, can I just I need something to cover the hip area, like come up a little mm-hmm. bit. Cause they no, like I mean, pros can wear high waisted too. Maybe Nike I just have a long torso. Nike Pro is lingerie. Right. <laughs> like you bro is like this is she's gonna cheek cut cheek. right underneath your booty cheek first of all mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> and it's not even Dude. gonna come over your hip <laughs> even for me like when i got because i got the nike pro tights i'm supposed to be able to wear that to the gym Mm-mm. no Mm-mm. that should just have my my package just sitting just like <laughs> and they got the stitches that go right there in the situation it's like no no <laughs> i know what night i know what nike on Nike oh, sex. I, hey, so, <laughs> you could be selling what? They selling the sex <laughs> because ain't first of all ain't there's no support in their bras, just titties everywhere, and like you say, like the the shorts and all of that, like it's like two, it's like two seconds worth of fabric on them, and then two the men's stuff ain't no better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, you have to be, it's like, yeah, it, it, I guess it's like, if you're a Nike pro, then you have like no fat on your body is maybe that's the assumption. And so maybe. it just like, it's, it's giving, yeah, that's what it's giving it's to giving me. Hey. It's giving hey. Yeah, exactly. Hey. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey. I don't know. Nike pro get some high-waisted shorts and make them a little longer. Maybe. Hey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, okay, Bandit, I'm, I'm like, I'm glad that you got it. I'm going to have to, when I get up there and, and give them a feel when I, for marathon weekend, I'm going to have to see what's what, um, cause mm. if you had to compare them against pioneers, what would your, what it would, mm. yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe not yeah, against, but like, you. you know what I mean? I'm not saying, maybe I said that wrong. If you could just. Put them side by side. What are the pros and maybe oh. you know areas of improvement oh. that you've noticed? Damn, that was a dirty ass. I was just a drink champ, so I can take a drink instead of answer that question. Damn, that was dirty, Gordy. Um, I'm not comparing. Uh, I'm just saying, like, if you want to be, no, I'm if gonna you, be honest though. I'm gonna be what? honest. I mean, 
I think, but look, I think it's something to say and bring up because it's like, if you are not trying to just buy the regular Adidas, Nike, all the, I almost said Nike a funky way, like, but, um, (laughs) uh, you know, it's like these alternatives, it's like, and even Lululemon, if you're not trying to do that, I feel like you could, cause, um, pioneers, the, 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 that's the same fabric as Lululemon. But you can support a black no, woman. It ain't the same. It's better. It ain't the same. It's what do better. you mean? That's what I'm saying. It's like it, people think Lululemon is amazing, and which it is, but it's like you could go with Pioneers and it's like you're getting even softer, better material. Um, and it seems what like I will what, say, yeah. What I will say, this is what I'm saying. I'm gonna ask you a question real quick. I'm gonna cut you off. I'm sorry. But I'm sorry, y'all. I'm also hungry as fuck. <laughs> but like fabric to skin. Just fabric on skin. Pioneers has banded tempo. The Pioneers merch. Uh, I should go grab some. I should pull them out. You know, I got uh, I got um, a crew neck sweater, which feels amazing. I really love it. It's another one that doesn't just like, you know, what I'm saying, accentuate accentuate me being a bigger guy and stuff like that. But it does. It's not just boxed out and all sloppy on you. It sits on me really proper. Uh, but uh, it does have performance elements to it. But for me, that's not something I would ever probably run in. It's something that I would probably wear as a lifestyle piece just to dress up and stuff like that. Um, you say it for Bandit? From yeah. uh, Pioneers. They, they crew neck uh, sweater that I got from uh, oh. the first season. They first Okay. Run. Yeah. Um, which maybe I should go get it and pull it out. Should I go get it? I mean, you know... When we get these know. visuals up, they can see it. But <laughs> <laughs> until until then, until then, but, and uh, the shorts, the shorts had the sh- the built in short in them and stuff like that. Now the shorts I did enjoy running in. That mm-hmm. was super fire. Um, I would prefer those shorts over the pioneers compression shorts. I do like the fact that the, comp- the pioneers that the uh, I mean I would prefer the pioneer. Shorts with the built-in lining, with the built-in uh, compression short. Uh-huh. It was like a five-inch regular short with the built-in uh, compression up mm-hmm. under the, under there. I would prefer wearing that to the banded compression, just because it fits me better. Got like it. Like it, it sits on my thigh. It's giving better. me the, the thigh com- the commentary about thighs. It's, yeah. yeah, it's giving me more mobility and stuff and and things like that. The pockets have zippers on it, so I'm not worried about nothing flying out as I'm running like I do with some of my Nike shorts and stuff like that. So that's what I really enjoy. But what I do love about the uh, Pioneers, I mean, the Bandit compression uh-huh. is that it got it got a few pockets. Like in the back, it got a pocket for me to go ahead and slide like a Morton Jail or two in there, which is a big deal because a lot of men have tights, do not have pockets. Like, you know, I guess they figure only women carry stuff on their runs. Men don't need to. <laughs> like we just out here just you know, ooh, I'm a man. I don't need no nutrition. Or, you know, like, it's not true. I would like to take my phone as well, you know, to get pictures. But what if I'm way back? Right. <laughs> but, uh, so, I do. So, you know, there's some pros and cons there. Um, let me see. Uh, Pioneers, I mean, Bandit doesn't have a pants for me to compare to the Pioneers pants, but I do enjoy the Pioneer pants and stuff like that. Um, once again, I'm not a big person who runs in pants. I know there are people who definitely run in running pants because they get a little cold during the winter and stuff. Like I could never run in like full pants. But once again, those are some pants that I would definitely rock, that I have definitely been wearing just on some lifestyle casual stuff. And once mm-hmm. again, the feel of it is amazing. The wind protection on there is really nice. Uh, the tanks, the Pioneer tanks was awesome. Just off the ability to just hold on, just just not hold on to moisture. I mean, I got rained on and that that tank just didn't sit down on my body. It wasn't just holding on to me. It was still loose. Like when I first put it on, it was taking the moisture off of me and pushing it to the outside. It dried really, really fast and it didn't get really, really heavy, which means it wasn't holding on to that moisture. I haven't, I don't have the men's, uh, the men's banded tanks yet, so I haven't had the chance to see 
how they are. But what I will say, style wise, I would prefer the Bandit tanks over the Pioneers tank. Functionality, Where? I feel like the Pioneers is killing the Bandit joints. But the muscle tanks, I'm not a fan of the muscle tanks. With the big, with the big shoulder joints, mm-hmm. you know how like you got the regular tanks with the small shoulder straps, but the muscle joints they go, they cover the whole shoulders aesthetically. I'm not a big fan of that. It might not cut right if you have like, it, I mean, are, that's Bandit again. No, that's Pioneer. So got the wide shoulder. Got it for the men. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not a big fan of that. But then there's also little things, you know, like. You know, like it's 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 small things that like probably speak a little bit more to my taste right. and stuff like that. Like I love Brandon and things like that, but I'm really particular on how Brandon is placed, right? And stuff like that. And so, um, I kind of probably lean a little bit towards the way Bandit places their words, and even when it's big on the back, the, the design of it and stuff like that, um. Is 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 different. I can't say it's necessarily better, but it's uh, it's just a little bit different. So aesthetically, as far as just like appeal, like when I'm looking at it, I might like gravitate more towards the bandit. So I think both brands are really good. I I need to run it off some fresh and shorts, but just off putting them on and trying them on. For me, I do feel like the Pioneers, functionality-wise, was really, really nice. It felt really, really good. I wish they had a compression short for me to put two and two together because they also kind of like, it's not apples and oranges, but comparing the compression short with the regular short with the built-in, yeah, you know, it's just, they Different. don't sit the same, they don't feel the same and things like that. So you won't go wrong if you want to get away from the regular, like you said, the Adidas, the Boomers, the Nikes, and stuff like that. I think both brands can give you what you need. But if you're not built like a regular runner, if you built like me, I didn't necessarily feel like the uh, the uh, the men's compression joints necessarily was like for Bandit. Yeah, for for Bandit was mm-hmm. like. You know, it didn't allow it didn't allow me to get in there com- comfortably. You know, there wasn't enough give <laughs> for me. You feel me? I need a lot um, of give. I love a lot of give. Yeah, I think that's the thing is that it needs a lot of give, and that that makes me wonder or want to try the pioneer like shorts. Mm-hmm. Spanish. I hope in shorts. the future. I hope in the future, as pioneers grow, they get into a space where they allow me to carry some of their pieces. Yeah, because I think both brands have something for Runners. different customers. Yeah, you know, and I, it's a Venn diagram. I do feel like there's some overlay as far as customers go, but they have a little bit of something for different customers. I think it it it, it, it tap our community very well because aesthetically they both are very beautiful brands. And right. Pioneer is just it's just oh my god, dude. there's there's nothing like that fabric on the market. Wow. No. You hear, you heard it here, folks. Well, come down, come down to last that. Put your hands on the pioneer, on the uh, bandit piece, ladies. And I couldn't speak too much to y'all. So I didn't want to speak too much to y'all because I'm not wearing it personally. But feel free to come, try them on, see how it feels, see how it looks for you. Pioneers does have a pop up in the city all freaking week, so. I forgot this is after the marathon, so y'all might have missed all that. But yeah, hopefully you didn't. This is post marathon, <laughs> folks. Hopefully you got to see all of that. Yeah, and it's it's nice. I enjoyed yeah. it. I'm really excited about my partnership with Bandit. I'm really excited about the aesthetic. I think the aesthetic fits more in line where I'm trying to take the store. Uh, both of the brands are a little bit more pricier than the Nike things that I carry, but pay for quality. Right. Yeah. And it's like, it's a smaller business. So you're just kind of, Nike has the affordability to price their items down. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. Okay. So then you're not, so, okay, this post marathon, we'll do like a proper marathon recap once that experience has happened. But part of the reason why we're doing this is because 
Ian, you're going to Toronto to run your own marathon, your own race. You're supporting the crew, the escape to Toronto crew. So it's like, we don't really have time to to record between then and whenever. So um, what are you, so how are you preparing? I mean, you're like, you're like really close. This is basically like you're in it. So what's the vibe? Because my dumb ass got my teeth taken out. Right. I can't run. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like just in this deconditioning de- period right before my race. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm probably going to fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's how I'm preparing for it. Uh, slowly get my jaw to go down so I can run as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I mean... I'm just going to be riding multiple highs. I mean, like the Chicago Marathon and the following weekend is Toronto Marathon. I mean, we getting our Airbnb together. I mean, getting our, um, our car situation together because you're going to need a rental down there. Right. And then we pulling up. I mean, right. that's all. That's the best way to put it. You know, I'm driving the team down to Niagara Falls so a few of them can run back to Toronto. Um, that's going to be fun. I'm going to enjoy that trip with them. I'm not running that part. I'm just doing a marathon myself. Uh, I got a goal of four hours for the marathon. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. You're just really excited, really ready. But it's like, at the same time, like I'm not in a place right now where I'm so excited for it because we still haven't gone through Chicago yet. Yeah. And all That's of the, the first thing is about that right now. Yeah. But um, is Karen it's, running? Karen in running not Karen, uh, Karen is doing um, Niagara Falls to Toronto. Doing both. Oh, she's doing both. She's doing okay. the marathon. And so this she's... will be her first like marathon race. Because I mean she did marathon distance at the Ultra, but this would be her first marathon, marathon race at and her first like like legit, legit race as a wind runner. Lit. Um so she's not doing Chicago. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, okay. she's not doing Chicago. Okay. And is are there any other wind runners going to Ni- Niagara Falls or to mm-hmm. Toronto? Okay. Don't you know, I think she's the only one that's gonna be out there. She's gonna be in the elite field? Um, no. No, we should have pulled some strings. Y'all should have tried to see this figured it out. She could have been up there. She's sub elite. She should have been up there. She running is with sub elite. elite field. Yeah, exactly. She could be in the but front. No. If she she's was trying to... to do Chicago, they would have had her. So she's being yeah, shy. They would have had her in the elite field. She'd right. Be She's just being yeah. shy. I feel like I feel like it's good to me. It's like okay, and I'm making assumptions. She's going out there to see what it's like, and then she's mm-hmm. she might do Chicago next year. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would love for her to do Chicago. That would be dope. Yeah. Also, yeah. from our conversation about the weather, I've been checking the weather, and obviously this is post marathon, but like it looks like. <laughs> It's like 40 to 60 degrees, the lowest 40, the highest 60. So as a spectator, I cannot wait to come back and be like, I was cold as fuck. (laughs) I'm going to be, yeah, my packing is like, I'm already thinking about, okay, I have sweatpants. I'm trying to make sure I have the right socks, the right tops, because it's going to be cold. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. Come get you a band of hoodies so you can stay warm, baby. I should, honestly. You feel me? You know what I'm we got saying. the marathon hoodie too. Listen, I don't. I think this is dropping the Monday after. I don't know when this is dropping, but y'all better come get the rest of this marathon gear before I go out of town on Thursday. <laughs> when I leave, all that shit need to be gone. What? Yeah, this, yes. this is gonna be the bonus episode of the week. All right. All right. But yeah. it's. I mean. I want to say like the bridge runners. So I'm not too familiar with the bridge runners organization and stuff like that, but suppose that like a collective of all like the original New York run clubs and stuff like that. They like the OGs. And so it's like, I think sure. like they kind of anniversary things. So they all popping up up there. In like November. Whole, uh, and, uh, for uh, the October joint. For, uh, for the Toronto Marathon. Oh, they're going to Toronto? Yeah, so that's why we decided to go up there because it's supposed to be like a whole celebration. And yeah. Like a lot of run crews from all over coming to Toronto to celebrate 
uh, the bridge runners and, you know, connect and do a whole bunch of stuff. So that's the main reason why we're going. Okay. I'm just excited to meet new run club leaders, new run club members, mingle, see what people doing out there and just have a good old time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yesterday I went to the Nike LA block mm, party. Come here. And that was interesting because I'm because the because I'm not yet haven't gone yet, but I'm you know will be going to the Chicago mm-hmm. Nike block party, and um, yeah, it was really cool. It was kind of like you know they what they did was they had it in the middle of this park, and it's the same. It's like right under uh, the Dodgers Field, um, mm-hmm. Dodger Stadium, because um, mm-hmm. that's like I guess in a park. I also found out our our taxi driver taxi driver. Our, Lyft driver told us that he's like, yeah, like, cause we didn't know the story about it, but supposedly there was a whole bunch of like, um, like it was like a Latino neighborhood up there. And then they like basically bulldozed everything down and then put the Dodger stadium on top. Um, Sounds about right. Yep. And so, um, now it's like a park and stuff, but it, it is just kind of strange. Um, and the fi- and that's where the marathon starts. Yeah. The LA Marathon, yeah. And so like or like wow. and then like the 5K when we ran the 5K went down where we where the block party was a little bit, but anyways, there's a meeting point and then they had um they had uh like golf carts. Mm-hmm. And then they would like drive people to the actual location, which was like up and around this hill and then back down into oh, this like wow. whole area. Yeah. It was like, they're like, do you want to walk like a four minute walk or do you want to get a ride with the, with the golf cart? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. So they give us a little ride and then we go down there and then there's like, it's really cute. And they had like food and drink tickets and food tickets. And like, and I'm assuming it's the same company that's doing all that they hired to do all of the block parties. Mm. Um, and, um, was able to meet Sharada Maddox, who is one of the mm. black women who ran under three hour, a three hour marathon, which is really cool. That's um, cool. Yeah, I would love to have her on the podcast just to see like what her perspective was and like what she's doing, what she, how she's running, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So I'll put that out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was vibes. It was vibes. I made a little keychain. Mm. They had like beat, they had like, uh, beading a beading section to make keychains and necklaces <laughs> and and bracelets and then they had like a, a obstacle course that had like the like floating men like the the air floating you know what I'm saying? oh wow you know and then you would like run through them it was like it was very interesting um so just trying to get out in the la scene and see what's what I'm just kind of but I also realized more and more that I just like really love being at the house. Like, yeah, that was so much fun. But it's like, ultimately, I'm like, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> I'm ready to go home. Oh, my God. That is hilarious. Uh, so. Um, well, that's cool. I mean, I mean, was it like, does, like how, did, how do Nike experiences feel in LA versus Chicago? If it was cool. Like, it was definitely off. Like, first of all, everything, every time I get invited to something, because I've been kind of meeting up with different people that work within the Nike LA office. Like, I visited the office, like, a couple weeks ago. Um, mm-hmm. And supposedly, it's like a lot of the people who work for Nike really love that office specifically, oh, even more than, really? like, the headquarters, which is really funny. Really? Uh, that's something the common I would get a lot. But um, what I just noticed is that I mean, just like anything else, like anything Nike does, like the registration is full immediately. <laughs> and, you know, and, and also just like, it's a vibe. It's it's just very, it's just, yeah, it's very LA. People are just like chilling. People, they dress it. Like it's, the style is different than in Chicago. Obviously it's, it's mm-hmm. I, I'm really enjoying not being known right now. Okay. I think it's actually, cause it's like, what's really great about going to the Nike Chicago block party is like, all my friends are going to be there. Like the community, like that's my people. But then mm-hmm. it's like, it's also, um, it's a, it requires a different type of energy than to just like show up and be able to like, just enjoy something. And I had like a couple of people who knew who I was, but that was mm-hmm. just it. And so it's mm-hmm. kind of nice to just be a little unknown right now because 
at the end of the day, like between Matthew and I, we end up doing things where you, you know, you naturally grow your network. It's going to inevitably, inevitably happen. So I'm, I'm think if anything, I'm just like enjoying experiencing things. And like my goal next is to just join people's run clubs Dope. and just, you know, pop up, you know, and not have to talk. Like I can talk to people, but that's not like people. Yeah. Like, yeah. Some people know, but some people don't, and it's fine. And it's like, it's just a different vibe. Um, but I will say too, like popping up at the park and like seeing like the low riders that are like tilted to the side and stuff like that. And like yeah. hearing like West Coast music in LA, it's just, it hits different. It hits different. It's like hearing <laughs> Kanye in Chicago. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. I would love to experience that, man. See what that's, see what that's like. Yeah, I'm t- I'm saying come uh, if you really the 5K ma- in the marathon in March I think is just like the perfect time to come through. Like even if you don't want to run the marathon, you can come run the 5K and just mm. like hang out. Just enjoy the city. Does yeah. Nike do the LA marathon? No, it is um I think it's Hoka. Oh, speaking now of I want to know. Oh now I want to know. I want to know what happened. You heard about how they did? Uh, how they did the fall half here in Chicago? We ended the last episode talking about it, but we can talk yeah. about it more because they, um, they, they, they <laughs> we can continue the conversation because they had us fucked. They had y'all fucked up. They had, <laughs> and they, listen. and the thing is, is they know. And if you didn't listen to the full podcast last week and you did not hear us talk about it, we can talk about it again. It's okay because. Cause what the fuck? That shit was crazy. That they knew crazy. damn well. It's, it's still going on. People still mad. Well, like yeah. People like going to their bank disputing the charges. <laughs> oh shit! Talking about I need a to refund. Get refund. That's actually yeah. really funny. Yup, disputing the charges to get their refund. G. It's crazy. It's crazy. Like like uh, I think uh, a couple of a couple runners in the community have been. Um, I think Crystal was interviewed about it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like a whole like um um uh, what you call it, scandal right now. Because it's like how you how you just sit there and act like you ain't know. Well, I mean, and I saw that the um the interview on on the because Crystal had me cracking up with all her said how they interviewed her for that at the end because she was clowning them on Twitter bad. And then she <laughs> she's like, update, I've been interviewed. Right. Um, Tell us how you really feel. Girl. Right. But it's like they had that interview where they like the the marathon folks had an interview where there was construction and they talked about how the construction would not um really impact the the route and the course and all that and how it'd still be a really beautiful race so and all that stuff. And then you were talking about how like they have to give very specific outlines of what the course is when they're getting permits. So they knew damn well when they did the race that it was less than 13.1. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, I mean they're just acting naive at this point. And then they don't even want to say sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. And then what they're doing now, it's like, if they could have really just, they could have just did what they should have done and then they wouldn't have been an issue. But then next year, that's how you lose participants. Yeah, like they should lose them. Yeah. So it's it should like, go all the way under, but there should be some repercussions for that. Cause it's just like, yeah. you obviously don't care about the runners. Like, well, how can you down. like, cause as a runner, you have to, you are trusting that the people organizing it, are actually doing a real race. And if it's a time chipped race, it's like you're putting the faith in them that like you're giving them money and that they're doing what they're supposed to do and making the course the actual distance it's supposed to be is part of that. Um, And then now it's like, I'm not going to pay for something if I don't know that it's actually going to be done ethically. Yeah. All right, Lifetime and Hoka. Yeah, I don't know. Get it together. Right. And um, so LA Marathon is sponsored by ASICS. Ah, uh, okay. As okay. of as of 2020. So I don't know who had it before that, but I just I saw this um article in 2019 that said that the deal started in 2020. The ugliest shoe in the ugliest running shoe in the world. The ugliest shoe in the world. <laughs> ugliest running shoe in the world. I just came they across just this talk about what their shoes look like. They don't care at all. They're like, y'all gonna run in them. We don't care. You know what shoe I really like as a um, 
just as a look, it's more streetwear, but like I didn't even realize they had shoes like that. Um, oh my God, I just blanked on it. Oh my God, it starts with an S and it's um, so. Saucony? No. Oh my God. The running vest that Solomon. Solomon. Oh. So Solomon sells like hiking shoes. They have a running vest. Yeah. They do all this stuff. But then like in LA, what's really popular, I've noticed, I guess, I I guess like the trendy people out there in like Silver Lake and stuff, they wear Solomon's a lot. Like the white and silver Solomon shoes. I'm like, I'm trying right. to get on that. That shit looks fire. It's like very different in the way that it's just, because it's like if Asics had style. Yeah, it's know, cute though. Compute. It's giving. It's giving. It's giving. It's Solomon hiking shoes. They're Solomon running. I think they're like um, Solomon shoes. Everybody, let's uh, do this search together. <laughs> all right. And I didn't even realize that they had. I think they are hiking shoes. Yeah. I think they're primarily hiking shoes, but then they, no, they have road running too. Yeah. I didn't even, thing is, is I didn't realize that they were actually like a brand that competed with. You thought they was an Amazon brand. I No, I just thought they like had, you know, a running vest. It never occurred to me like, oh, they have shoes too. You're talking uh, about this XT6 sport style. The Solomon yeah. joint. With yeah. the white and silver. Yeah. Like the way people wear, not the, I don't, I don't think it's the running shoe. Cause them running shoes don't look yeah, right. Yeah, got it's it's this this shoe that's at Bloomingdale's for like a hundred and ninety dollars. I need you to stop. <laughs> yeah, like it's this one right here. No, that's not it. It's look, a it's look, it's look, look, look. no, that's not it. No, I'm gonna send it to you. But it, it's like a they look like training shoes or trail shoes. Maybe they're trail shoes. Um, and they're like really cute. I might have to just cop some. See? I might. Nope, not those. Right. Yeah, I'm going to find the ones and I'm going to send it to you. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I think that, I mean, that's a brand that I'm really interested in because I didn't realize like that they, because they do trail running, road running, and hiking. And I'm like, who the fuck knew? I've never seen anyone run. No, those are not it either. Stop clowning me right now. Okay. You're, I feel like you're trying to find the ugliest I'm shoe not. and be like, these are the ones you're talking about. Hey, no. These are no some rack. These won't be the ones you're talking about. No, not at all. Uh, Look, these on high snobbity. These gotta be it, G. They on high snobbity. Let's see. Them the ones I told you first. Uh, nah, they like, they, oh, here, I found it. I found it. You're gonna be like, what the fuck? They're like, really cute if you look up solomon silver shoes like then you'll find them um i promise y'all it's gonna be on youtube so you <laughs> i know <laughs> but nah it's, it's actually yeah so like because like the it's just you know you LA, yeah the ones on the left oh my god they're amazing yeah i think it's just so like it's super just chill um and yeah, they're like hiking shoes. They're so cool. I think it's a Solomon XA Pro mm -hmm. unisex shoe. Try to just pull up. I'm just curious, curious about these other brands. Curious to see what's what's what. You know, I just I want to just try this, some new things. This is you. This is you. This is you slowly turning into a soccer mom. A soccer mom. Yeah. No, I'm telling you with the cool like oversized <laughs> tee and some and dope pants and, so, and then you wear like high high socks and them up like this. Mm -hmm. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. And a cute little cap. It's your very pants on, Your pants will start LA. flaring out at the bottom. What? Your pants will start flaring out at the bottom. No. That's the yeah. No, I mean, you're talking about boot cut? No, they just don't like. No. Like bell bottom. Watch. No, I'm not wearing bell yeah. bottoms. I'm not wearing <laughs> bell bottoms. Yeah, so uh, that's, I mean, that's, it. like, I've been, I went to the, I went to the Nike um, block party, and then I'm going to see how the Chicago one goes. I'm sure it's going to be great, amazing. Um, like, mm. I'm sure, <laughs> I feel like this I is not LA, we're, we're the palm trees. Like, mm. It's really chilly in here, it wasn't like this in LA. <laughs> Yeah, that's one thing where I'm like, uh, um, I guess I'm going to have to, I think I might bring a jacket 
I think I'm going to bring it. Are you wearing a jacket right now? I'm wearing a hoodie. Like when you go outside? Oh, no. I wear like sweaters and hoodies. I'm going to bring it. I, I, bring... I, have, I have been copying uh, some of Karen's style. Okay. She, like, she, she dresses like a cool parent sometimes. Okay. And so I've been like wearing my running vest over my hoodie. And it's just like, it's the perfect, like, it just sets your body like perfectly. Like a whole coat, you know, yeah. necessary sometimes. A vest but, like, is just perfect. Just throw the running vest over the hoodie. Yeah. And you just good to go. Yeah. I think I'm You're not I'm, too hot, not too cold. Bring a running vest. I'm probably going to bring my little like short jacket, my little black one, that the Nike one that I've worn before. I used to wear that one all the time. Anyways, I'll probably bring a small jacket because if I'm going to be outside cheering folks on at the marathon, I'm, it's going to get cold. We need hot chocolate. We need hot beverages. We need so, hot so on water. Sundays, we'll be having, we'll be taking care of the early morning parts. Okay. Um, I think. Grocery run, go have a tailgate situation in the afternoon. So we'll have coffee and hot chocolate in the morning. All right. Um, and yeah, I mean, oh, I played tennis yesterday. Ooh. It was fun. I had I to get it. How was that? It was great. It was like, I had no idea what I was doing. Tennis? Have you played tennis before? I am not good at tennis. I'm not at all. Okay. Uh, but I got better just being on the court. Like I, I actually took like one um, lesson in Chicago at some point. And then, yeah. So I like kind of, kind of know kind of a little bit, but it makes your arms and shoulders really like sore, like all that movement yeah. and twisting and stuff. So, you know, I might be getting better at tennis. Also might be looking into some other types of sports, aquatics. Okay. We'll see. All right, you want to do some open water swimming out there? I would love to do that because I did go to the beach and I could have stayed in the water all day. Yeah. It doesn't, like, being, like, out there, out, out there, like, really, it that's scary. But just, like, waiting in the water and being able to stand up and that's just, like, at your, like, thighs or, like, knees, like, I could sit in the water all day. All right. It's fine. No, I realize I realize there's some of that I don't enjoy the beach. What do you mean? I don't enjoy the beach. Like I like to go experience it in Italy. Like but just like spending like a day at the beach, like nah, that's just too much sun for me. Yeah, I think I was there for like a we we got there at like three, we left at like six. Yeah, that's because we met up with Ooh, a friend. Three yeah. to six? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's Perfect. Yeah. I could do that. We could have stayed for the sunset, that. but then we didn't. And we were just like, okay, that's fun. That's fine. Like you just go and you, but it's always there. You can yeah, always, and also true. like in LA, it's, it's, I mean, and I will also say this because I know people have always given me shit for being in the Midwest and calling the lake the beach. They like refuse to call lakes the beach because to them, the beach is the ocean. Yeah, because they ask <laughs> Yeah, but we got sand. I, we got a huge body of water. So beach, yeah, I'm like, like that's a like, beach. I, what else like, you gonna call it? What other word do you have? for They it? say it's the lake. They just yeah. say you're going to the it's lake. Beach you're not lake. going do to. You know, yeah, they don't like, even know what a beach is. That's what I'm they saying. I'm like, the there's sand is. and there's water. I don't right. understand. The sand <laughs> like, part is the beach. That's like that's the beach. the beach part. Like not the body of water. Nah. Yeah, I just yeah. Coastal elites. I know. So um. Yeah, so I mean, but I would say like the there's so many, there's like obviously the coastline is there. So like you can then there's so many different areas of like beach that you can go to. I was at Santa Monica um beach a couple of days ago and that was like really cool. And like honestly though, like you could it's not it gets cool. There's a really cool breeze from the ocean. So like it's not super, super hot. And if anything, in the water is always kind of cold because it's the ocean. And so then it's like it's really refreshing and everybody's just chilling and you could just like sleep. And then there's like always people, and then LA, there's always people being weird. There's always like somebody like being weird. Get more sun. No matter where you are, there's always someone like a little weird. This is a little weird. Um, and it's like, it, it's, it's kind of wild. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could have, I could have sat in that water and just chilled. Oh, that sounds beautiful. That sounds beautiful. I'm, I'm, that sounds wonderful. I mean, three hours is max. Like, I'm good on that. Maybe an umbrella to pull out for 
Boom, yeah, wow. you got to have an umbrella and good seating and like a good layout area and good snacks. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and like and be okay with and sometimes it's like it's not even about the washing times. It's just about like hearing the ocean waves and then like in the background and just taking a nap. I That's love it. that for you. That's I love it. that for you. There you so, go. So, you know, I'm just exploring things. So, you know, when my friends come and visit, we can do things together. Listen, um, say less. Yeah. Say less. Say less. I, I got to come out there. Karen, Karen has the East Coast. So I'm going to take the West Coast. Why you, you go out to you go out to Boston with our friends and oh. you know takes over the East Coast. So I'm okay. Like, I might just use you to take over the West Coast. Just come on through. Just come on through. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. I feel like we, you know, we just want to pop on here and be like, hey, here's another so, yeah. episode of the Runners Club podcast. <clears throat> pray for your boy. Pray for his job. Yeah, pray for his job. Do all the things. Um, try bandit. But listen, Support come to pioneers. the store. We got the, the Marina, We got the Bandit. We got all type of shit. It's happening. We got Alpha Flies, Vapor Flies, Endorphins. We got everything you need to like enjoy your mouths or go fast as fuck. Fast. Okay. Okay. All right, y'all. Listen, peace. We love y'all. Love Bye. you. Bye. <laughs>